Good morning, everyone. I'm Stéphane Tremblay, CTO of the Semtech Activision Business Unit. And today I want to talk to you about a piece of technology that exists in all SDVOE endpoints called pixel packing. Pixel packing is really the name of the codec engine that we have given. And in order to present that technology to you, we're going to go in four steps, uh, explaining the pixel packing, followed by a codec shootout demo, the side-by-side -side results, and Q&A. Uh, in order to best describe you and gives you the bird's eye view of what is pixel packing, let's start with a fact session. So, why develop a new codec? Why Semtech had to come up with new technology for codec, right? Uh, there's JPEG XS, H.264, there's NJPEG, all types of codec already exist, but why did we have to write a new one? What was wrong with the previous codec? Easy answer. We were targeting a compression ratio of 1.3 to 1 where as most of the other codec are at least 10 to 1, if not 20 to 1, right? You need 20 to 1 to compress 4K 6444 down to 1 gig. The thing that is not good about high compression is it's obviously introducing artifacts, but it's also introducing latency, and it requires a frame buffer. So frame buffer is more components on a PCB, more expensive and more power. So this is why Semtech had to go ahead and develop a new codec for SDVOE. Is Pixel Pack based on Wavelet or DCT? Well, the answer is no. Because we target a small compression ratio, there's no need to go from the temporal resolution uh, to the frequency uh, resolution of a single. So we remain in the spatial domain, avoiding transformation, avoiding artifact. Is pixel packing multi-generational? Yes. What is multi-generational is you can go from one stage uh, to the other stage and go back and forth, so from TX to RX many, many times and you always end up by having the same quality of an image. This criteria alone is something all the other cadet technology on the show floor used in Pro AV cannot claim the same thing. Meaning that if you take, for example, JPEG XS, you go one step, you get deterioration, a second step, more, 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 more and more. And if you do multiple pass, well, the signal gets uh, pretty ugly at the end of it. Okay, so what's the principle of operation? Because this is unique. This connect technology does not rely on any other uh, technology out there. So it goes by in human current image, there's a high correlation between the neighboring pixel. Uh, so, if you focus on encoding the difference between your neighbor pixel, you end up using less bandwidth than if you don't consider the context besides you, right? So, if I'm a, to encode a small difference, I use less bandwidth than encoding a brand new pixel every time. And in synthetic pattern, where sometimes approximation needs to be done because the pixel, the neighbor pixels cannot be coherent, the SDVOE codec will always do its approximation where the human eye cannot see the difference. So the human eye works that way. It can detect high contrast, low frequency transition quite easily. On the opposite, high frequency, low contrast transition are barely visible by the human eye. And is pixel packing lossless? The answer is yes. I encourage you to go take a look at the codec shootout demo we have on this side of the wall. You'll see for yourself that pixel packing is the only technology uh, that is purely lossless and you cannot distinguish any difference. So let me put out the, the principle of operation uh, with an example. So let's start in a natural image, right? This is a natural image of a Leopard 
uh, very high quality, completely uncompressed 4K. So as you see, lots of high frequency transition in the fur. So this is one of the high quality image, but coming from a natural image, right? If you are to look at the distribution of just the green pixel, you see that all the values are possible and not evenly distributed, but there's a big distribution of uh, the pixel value from 0 to 255 on that uh, 8 million pixel screen. So this is the graph on the left. But take a look at the graph on the right, which is, okay, what is the difference between just the pixel on the left and the new pixel? You'll see that in natural image, that difference is mostly centered around 0, and very often it will go further away than the few pixel value that you see. So in our example, mostly zero difference, and it's it doesn't go far, it doesn't spread far, right? This is not a uncommon natural image. This is the source of a natural image. So if you are to encode that difference using an algorithm like Gollum coding, for example, you end up using very little bandwidth. So this was my Leopard. If I zoom in on one of the area where there's the most frequency transition, you'll see that even in the place where the most frequency transition, the neighbor pixels are alike, right? That's the nature of natural image easy to encode if your compression ratio is low. Okay, what about computer-generated image, right? This is different than natural image. This, this, this can transition from one pixel to the other to a completely different value. So let's take a look at this case and try to better understand it. This is the same graph as the one with the Leo par, but now completely different result. In terms of distributed value of the green pixel, for example, and why I use the green pixel is because the green is the, the pixel that the brain interprets the most. More than R, more than B, your eye is more sensitive to green value than red or blue. So because it's computer generated, we don't have a vast distribution of pixel value. It's really, really centered around discrete value. And now the difference between your neighbor pixel is very often zero, of course, if we can see that in a spreadsheet when, when we're scanning that line, it's always the same, the same, the same. Oops, cell transition, but the same, the same, the same. So this is why we have lots of distribution around zero and the rest instead of being described by the natural curve we have for natural image we have discrete value but it's again easy to encode for a predictor because you have discrete value so easy to encode that difference because the values are not all over the place so Perfect. Pixel packing seemed the solution. What about the result, the actual uh, test comparing other solutions? So on the other side, we have a Connect Shootout demo. So here's the setup of the Connect Shootout. It's set, simple setup. We start with a laptop. We have an HDMI splitter that gives four identical versions of the signal. And we compare the native screen on top versus the SDVoE versus the A-Speed uh, chipset versus the NVX350 from Crestron. Also, because we could uh, measure stuff, we said, let's compare the image quality, but let's also compare the power consumption, right? Because it's a codec shootout, so we can measure the power we see that we have 6 watts for SDVoE, 7 watts for A-Speed, which isn't that bad, but Crestron consumes 28 watts, which is quite a lot, making quite a difference at an installation level. Can you imagine hundreds of endpoints with that power consumption? It's crazy. We also had measured the latency 
from the complete encoding, right? Complete encoding for the reference is obviously zero. For SDVoE is 0 0.078 milliseconds, which is blazing fast. For A speed, we have much more. It's 22.2 milliseconds. And Crestron is not a Genlog solution. So Crestron, they have not been capable of re-establishing the source timing at the screen. So what they do is their latency vary between z a quarter of a frame and one frame and a quarter. And it vary. And when it's too much, they skip a frame or they repeat a frame, yet introducing another artifact. What are the results for the image quality? So this is what you can do. Again, go on the other side, you'll see it live. But in a tough test pattern, the reference or SDVoE will always put out the same, same result. No degradation on SDVoE. But the two competing solutions will show AV distortion. Most of the people will notice the EAV distortion on that magenta screen here, 422444, but if you look at the text, there's also degradation. So here's a zoom in. I, I took this picture with my phone. So while the pattern is moving, this is a picture taken with a phone of SDVOE. This is, let's say, crest rock. So you see that there are pixels that shouldn't be lit there's really artifact text is completely unreadable what about the just add power solution with the a speed chip inside same thing right different artifact but heavy artifact uh, be still so here's the table breakdown of the three solutions side by side so, in terms of compression artifact, nothing can be found on SDVoE and every artifact from coming from the one gig solution, even with a moving pattern or static pattern. Uh, is the video genlock? On SDVoE, the genlocking is immediate. As soon as you switch to a new video, the time base is restored from the original source, so it's purely genlock. In the case of the just had power, I found it that it can genlock, but it takes a couple of seconds, which is not that bad. But in terms of Crestron, it's never genlock. The latency, I said that in an earlier slide, super low, quite way more time, 22.1 millisecond, but I would say accept barely acceptable. And in the case of Crestron, well, it's not genlock, but the latency is slightly better than ASP. Power consumption is the big difference here between the three contender. We have 6 watts, 7 watts, and here 28 watts, which is a lot of power consumption. So, I want to say uh, in, in my closing comments that quality is important, and I'll get you a quote from someone really famous, me. <laughs> So comprising image quality for the sake of saving some bandwidth is like buying a sport car and never pushing it to save on gas. Bandwidth is cheap, quality is important, might as well invest and have the good transport system.